Hi, this is Lou Sanderson, and this is May 2020 top marketing, monthly marketing event. So there's top, the top five questions that we must be able to answer because these are the questions that we have, have coming into COVID-19. Number one, when is the economy going to recover? And number two, are we going into a recession? Number three, is this going to be anything like 2008? And what about all the job losses we've had recently? And finally, what should I be doing right now? Number one, when is the economy going to recover? Well, you know, the COVID-19 coronavirus, this pandemic that we're going through currently is really caused a pause button and it's been a real hit on the American economy. So the three major financial institutions are calling for a rapid V type recovery. And what this means is where we're, we have a sharp decline and that's what we're looking at with quarter one and quarter two of this year. And what they're looking at is that we will be going back up in our GDP for quarter three and quarter four which means the last half of the year that we are going to be in a, a really strong recovery. So historical analysis shows us that pandemics are usually V-shaped, which means a sharp recession that recovers quickly and it really doesn't really damage home prices. So, you know, basically even looking at the potential impact of COVID-19, we have to look back at the previous pandemics that we've had. SARS, the 1968 H3N2, which was the Hong Kong flu, the 1958 H2N2 Asian flu, and then again the 1918 Spanish flu. So does this mean that we're going into a recession? Well, recession doesn't always equal housing crisis. So with the exception of two recessions, the Great Recession that we just went through, you know, 10, 12 years ago um, of 2007 to 2009 and the Gulf War, which was 9-11, 1990 to 1991, no other recessions have impacted the U.S. housing market, according to Freddie Mac. So if we look back at the five last recessions, if you look at 1980, Home prices went up 6.1%. 1981, they went up 3.5%. This is 1991, which was the Gulf War 9-11 um, incident that we went through, and they went down 1.9%. And then in 2001, prices, home prices still went up 6.6%. And then 2008, which, you know, is all burned in our, <laughs> in our memories, is... Home prices went down 19.8%, 19.7%. And I will show you, show you in a coming slide why that happened. So is this going to be anything like 2008? So, you know, we still bear the scars from the Great Recession. It's, it hurt a lot of people financially. So while, you know, housing was very damage in 2008, 2009, this may be what brings us out of this recession that we're in currently. So the thing that 9-11 has in common with, with this is it generated a lot of fear and anxiety among the general public. People avoided crowds because they were afraid that there was going to be another terrorist attack. And they really are acting the same way today because you know, nobody really wants to get sick with what we've heard about, you know, the toll it takes on, on the body. And really the same parts of the economy are under pressure. And we're talking about airlines, leisure, hospitality, restaurants, entertainment. Um, you know, those are really being hit again this, this time. So this is really why home prices dropped so drastically in 2000 in this um, process coming up to 2008 of the Great Recession. As you can see, house, housing prices just went up so tremendously. It was, you know, 
it's not a normal situation and it was very well manipulated where the last six years coming up to the um, COVID-19 pandemic, we've had moderate increases in, in pricing. Now, mortgage availability. Um, if you look back in 2006, it was so easy, and as you can see by this graph, it was so easy to get a loan. Really, all you had to do is fog a mirror, basically, and you would get a loan. No money down, no um, skin in the game. Where today, because they have made it much tougher to get a loan to purchase a house, um, it's much more realistic. Maybe a little too strict. So, and back in 2007, there was 8.2 months of inventory, where today there's really only 3.1%. And another thing too is with the Great Recession, if you look at the total of the amount of dollars that were pulled out of people's homes, I mean, people used their homes like ATMs because they were appreciating so much. And if you look at, at the total here, $824 billion were pulled out of homes to buy boats and cars and um, exotic trips. Um, people just really, you know, they weren't really smart about the money at that point. Where now, we've only had $232 billion taken out of homes coming up to this um, pandemic that we're dealing with currently. Now, the nice thing about now is 53.8% of Americans have at least 50% equity in their homes, which is, you know, which is fabulous. And really, this is how we build wealth. And 37% of all homes are free and clear. And then the other 27.6% of mortgages have at least 50% equity. So people are being very smart about home ownership these days. Now, back then in 2006, the, per, uh, the median income needed to purchase a median price home, which was 25.4%, but people were coming in with no money. So, you know, it was kind of a crazy time then. And today, 14.8% um, of median income needed to purchase a median priced home. Okay, so now we've dealt with, we're dealing with a bunch of job losses. If we look at, at uh, March, so the week of March 15th to 21st, 3.34 million people filed for unemployment because they lost their jobs. And the week of March 22nd to 28th, another 6.65 million people are unemployed. So that's why it's really kind of a good thing that um, the three major institutes are still saying that we are going to be in for a major recovery. We are, we are currently having um, new jobs come up. So these are Goldman Sachs's unemployment rate projections. So for 2020, they're, they're projecting that we're only going to have a 15% of the population unemployed. And, you know, these are very promising projections that in 2020, we're only gonna have six to 8% of unemployment, and in 2022, 5%, and then 4% in 2023. Now, if you take a look at the labor statistics, 59%, uh, you know, this is the biggest unemployment right here, food service, restaurants, you know, hospitality, and, and those kinds of things are in that. Now, really, what do unemployment rates in home sales? Well, they really don't have a, a direct correlation or relationship. This is the unemployment graph as you look. And here we had 9.6 unemployment rate. Um, things were down right there. But here we're at 15%. Well, it's come down. And, you know, we still have a lot of people still buying homes. A lot of people are still employed. So if we look at current unemployment rates, 
this is going to kind of blow you away. During the Great Depression, and e there were even fewer people here on this uh, in the U.S. than there is now. And look at the unemployment rates: fifteen point nine percent in 1931, twenty three point six. I mean, there was a lot of people unemployed. And in the Great Recession, um, it was you know it was definitely lower. And with our current crisis right now at 2020, we're looking at 15%, um, and then it's going to get better. And they haven't really even projected into 2024 and 2025. So what should I do right now? Home ownership is really an, uh, an important source of wealth creation, and it enables homeowners and their succeeding generations to move up the economic ladder because as you build um, you built equity in your home, it helps you build wealth. Okay, so how does this affect sales? Well, average days on market, um, the, the really dark blue is up to 30 days. We're in California, so we're at 31 to 45 days on, on the market average. So this is what a lot of people are wondering. Distress sales. So if you look back at 2012, we were up to 35% as distressed property sales, foreclosure, short sales, all that kind of thing. And moving forward into 2020, we're only at 2% currently. And so how's this going to affect home prices? So over year over year, the percentage in price change were at 10.4%, which is over 5%. Um, so, I mean, we're still, things are still appreciating, but at a slower level than the Great Recession. And then housing inventory, what's going on with that? So, if you look at this map, um, California not a lot of people are putting their houses on the market. They're going to kind of just sit back, wait. Um, you know, they, <clears throat> with COVID-19, you know, everybody's sheltering in place. And so they're really trying to be safe and protect their families. So a lot of houses are not going on the market currently. So what about buyer demand? How is that affected? Are people waiting? Actually, everything in blue, there are still people out there looking to buy. People still need to buy homes. There are still people that need to sell homes, but the, it's stronger in the buyer's market. And interest rates, how does interest rates affect the whole situation? So mortgage rate projections, we're looking at Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, the Mortgage Broker Association, and then National Association of Realtors. That's what these acronyms stand for. So, um, you know, it's it's averaged of all four. We're looking at around three and a half, really, um, for all four quarters uh, from 2020, uh, second quarter, 2020, third quarter, fourth quarter, and then the first quarter of 2021. So uh, mortgage credit, is it available? Well, um, average FICO score for closed loan by purchase type. So all loans at 738. Conventional is 755 is the average FICO score. FHA is 678. And then VA is 711. So, okay, here's the current market conditions. Now we're looking at, here's Los Angeles. Normal, normal, March 20th, this is um, each, each month of the year. So normal, normal, strong, and then all of a sudden it really put the brakes on. So it turned into a slow market. Riverside, it was normal, and then it, um, it got strong, and then all of a sudden it got slow as well. Now let, let's look at Orange County and San Diego. Um, 
Let's look at San Diego first. Normal, strong, strong, and very slow is in San Diego. And Orange County, let's look at Orange County. Slow, then it was a normal market for the, the, um, February and March, and then all of a sudden it became very slow too. So San Diego and Orange County both have slowed down um, quite a bit. So these are kind of our resources. So who are we? We specialize in inherited homes, downsizing or divorce. And these are families that go through, you know, difficult transitions and they need somebody that specials, specializes with the issues that come up. So we're here to help you or someone that you know dealing with inherited homes, downsizing or divorce. We have a, a team of, of professionals that we partner with to provide any, any type of service that you might need with your family, um, attorneys, you know, just kind of anything. And we are also here for a free consultation. My name's Lou Sanderson. I'm a real estate broker. Um, I also am a senior real estate specialist, certified probate. Um, we also are experienced with divorce situ situations. And we provide virtual home tours, virtual open houses, virtual face-to-face -face meetings with clients. And we have been doing digital signatures for forever. So um, we can help um, when you have a home to sell and you want to be safe about it. So I want to thank you for your time. My name is Lou Sanderson again, and I hope you have a fabulous day.